What's his little nightmares hide off camera from the player in the Twin Chef's kitchen domain? In Little Nightmares, we must survive on this sinister vessel, and almost everything on the ship wants to kill or eat us. This game in its original state is dark, and if we brighten things up, there's a lot hidden off camera and out of bounds. So in today's video, we're going to be covering the entire chef area and all the bizarre oddities that can be found. So I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. As always, I like to do a very quick recap of the area so that everyone remembers the game as much as possible. Little Nightmares is a puzzle adventure game where it plays a little girl named Six who must escape this giant underwater vessel called the Maw. After escaping the janitor's grasp, we are introduced to a new set of baddies, the twin chefs and their kitchen area. So, we'll be taking a closer look at the conveyor ride in, a sausage machine that isn't doing exactly what you think it is, the chef's various kitchens, bedroom, and all the way to where we make our escape. We got some ground to cover, so let's jump in. So starting off, we find ourselves in a ventilation shaft. We just got done escaping the clutches of the janitor, but what follows is the part where we have to jump and grab onto a hook as we cross this giant space. You can see one of the chefs in the background. He eventually leaves our sight as he goes through a door. Taking a closer look, I figure the chef would disappear after going through the door. Sort of like how the janitor does in the previous section. But instead, we can see that he walks in place indefinitely. I tried to get six up here before the chef walks away, but quickly realized both the surface the chef is standing on and the wooden platform have zero collision. However, I was able to find collision on the other side of the doors, allowing me to walk in this area. Being in here with a chef doesn't phase the chef, which makes sense as he simply ignores us as he continues to get his workout in. Nothing else is up here from what I could tell. Although something else I noticed is that the hooks with and without body bags are possibly being reused as you can see them disappear and reappear. So I was wondering what would happen to Six if we remained on the hook while it cycles back to the front. Normally, if you hang onto the hook, a device connected to the rail shakes you off. However, if we bypass this device and hang onto the hook as it disappears, well, at first I couldn't locate Six, but eventually I saw a yellow dot in the distance. So I rushed over to it and indeed found Six, whom appears to be in great pain. Turns out that hanging onto the hook caused Six to get permanently stuck underneath the map, as she still appears to be holding onto the hook. Her body is also being contorted while she continuously shakes. I attempted to free her from this state without reloading the game, but was unable to do so. One could say she is stuck in a little nightmare. Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. Anyways, pushing forward, we can see Six is still experiencing hunger pains. That's when we see a helpless rat that just got caught in a trap. Since she's starving to death, of course, Six starts chowing down on the rat. And to the right, Dark Six appears once again. I mentioned this before in the janitor area, but Dark Six is this shadow-like entity that appears whenever Six eats any type of meat. We can get a better look at Dark Six, as she creepily stares Six down. This doesn't last that long, and she just appears right as we're finishing this rat sandwich. Moving on, we approach the section where we formally meet the first twin chef. As you can see, he's just as disgusting as he is in our normal view, but there really isn't much going on off screen in this area. I did manage to have some fun with the chef though. So if we bypass the point of activating him, he just continuously sharpens his knife. We can even get up on the table and stare at him face to face. Six is even able to ride the knife. Well, sorta. I even tried dancing in the pot of boiling water in the background and he never flinched. Once he's been set into motion though, I noticed that he would grab this sausage link and drop into the boiling water behind him. If we stay back and let him wander, he'll continuously do this, as he unknowingly grabs the same exact sausage link over and over again. So I make my way to the bigger part of the kitchen, after bypassing the chef, and acquire a sausage as a parting gift. However, to my surprise, the chef activates and, well, wait, he's not going for me. I'm not entirely sure how this happened, but I managed to make friends with the chef. I just followed him around like I was his assistant, all while preparing this feast for their guests. That will definitely be meeting later on in the game. Let's get back on track though. So normally the player evades the chef as we make our way up into the ceiling area and out of the kitchen. This next area is where Six must sneak into the twins' chef room and retrieve a key that she needs in order to progress. During this process, we end up encountering the other twin chef as we wake him while trying to get the key. Although, if we decide to let him sleep and take a closer look, we can see his mask is all bunched up. I went in for a closer look, only to find out that he just has a fat neck, with a tongue hanging out of it for a head. 
It was definitely weird looking, but also kind of expected, as the chefs are never unmasked during normal gameplay. Although we can catch them occasionally lifting the mask slightly as they have an itch. If we make our way out of here with a key and down the elevator, we end up right back where we were before. That's when I noticed another gnome platform in the distance, and realized it's the gnome that we end up freeing from this jar. I had mentioned this previously, but we will commonly run to these platforms where gnomes are stored off screen. Anyways, let's move forward though and get out of this kitchen. The next area involves going into a freezer room and setting up various pieces of ham to be dropped into this sausage machine. We then go back down and use the machine to create a few sausage links and swing into the next area. Breaking off camera, we can see a platform in front of this room with leftover developer text saying, quote, where hams get teleported upon completion, end quote. So basically what's happening here is every time a ham goes through the machine to make sausage links, the ham is teleported to this platform. Once I got all three hams through the machine, I got a very cruel idea and decided to take the gnome that's in this room and try putting it in the machine. I wanted to see if it would possibly teleport him to the platform where the hams go, but unfortunately that isn't the case. At least we could say the gnome wasn't harmed while attempting this. As we continue on, we run into another one of the chefs as he comes down this elevator. We can see that he just materializes in the elevator when we pull the lever, but at this part we normally hide, as we wait for an opening to flee from the area. During this, the chef shakes a crate we're hiding under and pockets some cheese. If we look at this from another angle, you can see the cheese is actually floating behind the box. We also can see that once he pockets the cheese, it immediately goes underground and re-emerges, going right back to where it originally was. If we just keep sitting here, the chef will repeatedly keep taking this cheese, making it seem like he has a bottomless pocket. At this point we are tasked with some more sneaking around, and we find that there isn't much going on off camera throughout this area. So we obtain the key, access another kitchen, outsmart the chefs, and escape this terrible place. Or so we thought. Normally, the chefs continue to aggressively chase Six down, and it's towards the end of this chase that we end up narrowly escaping, as we ride safely away on this conveyor line of hooks. So rather than doing that, I want to see if he'd still chase me while going back the way we came. The answer to this is definitely yes. When the chef is in this chasing state, he's fully determined. So much so that if we rip Six out of the level and just let her fall into the abyss, the chef, in a way, follows. The world unloads and he begins to fall as this pursuit continues. I followed them as they fell for well over five minutes. At one point, we can even see the chef doing a grab animation, as if he captured Six. You can see the loading icon up here, as if he actually succeeded with capturing us. Another thing I tried was bypassing the other chef and continuing forward on the hook. I was thinking the same thing would happen again, like when we tried this earlier in the game. Sadly though, this kills Six and loads us back to the checkpoint. I then checked out what the other chef does after going through the door. He of course just disappears shortly after entering it. At this point though, we make it out of the chef's domain in one piece. However, I couldn't resist and decided to go back to see if they would reinitiate a chase with me after successfully evading them. As you can see, they don't have the slightest idea that I'm here, as they continue to squeal in frustration, making for a funny sight. But this concludes Radabon's journey through Little Nightmares in the Twin Chefs area. I hope you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you did, and I'll see you in my next one. Cheers!